What's up, party people? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for your interest in part two of this build. Uh, if you missed part one, I'll leave a link in the description um, and probably somewhere around here, I'm still learning how to do that. So don't at me, bro. Um, <laughs> anyway, let's get back to the live action. Again, thank you guys and enjoy the content. I wanted to show you guys, I want to show you guys real quick, uh, given this is a techie channel, <laughs> uh, how I terminate Cat 5, or in this case Cat 6, uh, RJ45 connections, I should say. Um, so first I'm going to throw a RJ45 on this, and then we'll run this to our switcher in the rack and just kind of lay out a rough cable path just so I can see what length I'm gonna want here. But, um, so yeah, let me show you. So I like to <clears throat> strip off quite a bit here. Um, yes, I know it's kind of wasteful, but uh, the thing I have found is that and I will show you the pass-through RJ45s are the best thing to ever have been invented for the networking and data cabling community. <laughs> and I also apologize, I'm a little under the weather right now, and it is a cold. It is not the Rona. You know, colds still exist. So, uh, yeah, I like to strip off quite a bit. So that's, uh, I mean, a couple inches here. Uh, and then I straighten all these out. And I'm not professing to be the best data technician to exist. This is simply how I do it. Everyone has a different method. Uh, this is what I have found to be the easiest for me. Uh, this is what I like to do. So this is Cat6 feed through. Let me see if you guys can see this. Cat6 feed through RJ45. These are the best because of that right there. You can, as it says, feed all your excess here right through the connector and why i love this is it's a lot cleaner and you can get so much done a lot faster by doing it this way 
and yes, I understand, you know, some of you might do it differently, there, I, maybe, maybe this is completely wrong, you know, but this is how I do it, this is, I've made cables this way for quite some time, and have not had one fail, so, until that day, and I improve upon whatever I need to do to make it better, which, if you have con some constructive criticism, you can leave that in the comments. But until that day, I'm going to keep doing what I know to work, and what I know saves me time, which in turn saves me money, or makes me money, depending which which way we're looking at it. But as my... Uh, my wife can attest, I cannot stand wasting time, and especially when other people or other things waste my time, I'm a pretty uh, easygoing person, but unnecessary waste of time is something that uh, I struggle with to have patience with, and... <laughs> Forgiveness, I guess. Um, yeah. So, all of that rambling to say, this is how I like to do this, and will continue to do so. Also, I feel like my voice sounds like Batman right now. I mean, probably not as cool, but... That's just what it feels like. So, get all these in here. Which, if you have not used pass-through or feed-through connectors, you might be saying, wow, that's a lot easier. And you're right, it is. So then, at this point, I take and push all this excess through, turn it this way, and bring it right up. And personally, I love how clean that is, where you've got minimal exposed wire here in the connector, and it looks like your cable or your coating is running right into the connection. This is personally uh, my ideal look, but everyone's different, as I said, so not right, not wrong, just different, as my mother-in-law loves to say, and I agree with it. And we put connection in the Klein Tool crimper cutter multi-function beast mode, and crimp away. And on this side, as you can see what's in my finger here, is all the trimmed excess. And we drop that, finish our crimp, pull cable out, and we have very strong connection and very clean cut right on the end there. Moving over to the workbench toolbox, and I'm gonna be soldering our XLRs that are going to the ATEM, uh, the switcher. Um, I'm using my quad hands. Uh, handy helper here. Um, these things are awesome. Made in the U.S. Love them. Um, so let me get that set up and we'll get to soldering here.
Well, the time has come. Everything is officially patched. Deck length's all patched. Data's all patched. All of our patches here are soldered, connected, twisted, locked, ready to rock. Uh, data switch, our network switch is up there. And we got our data trunk line running into it, down, connected to our jack, terminated, ready to go. At this point, everything in the rack is on. Um, there's a couple things I need to, I'd rearrange some of the power here that, no, this is not staying like this is the, just temporary. Um, I did not account for the lacing bar being right in the way of my outlet there. I had checked the fit, but um, I kind of changed my power plan when I had the lacing bar off, and that is why that happened. So, uh, at this point, I'm going to button this up and start testing things, because I'm sure there's going to be some things that we'll need to address. So, I'm going to button this up, and we'll start testing this. And the glorious moment, shut the door. I have officially gotten everything all ready for testing. Fans installed, thermostat probe is working, and we got our temperature dialed in there. Um, so now it's time to clean all these goodies off my desk here, and I will start setting up monitors and setting up sources to test inputs with my helper it's alive that's right we're rolling here and yes I did do some self promoting here dropped the time warp video of this part of this rack build actually uh, which you saw in this as some testing footage so we've got here our key and fill outputs from the Mac Mini coming out of the deck link, our patches down there. And this is just a cluster of, I just DA'd everything off the camera. Um, so that is live camera you're seeing there, which is this pocket cinema right here with the Condor blue cage. Gotta rep the blue. Back the blue and rep the blue. That's how I roll. Um, yeah, so inputs one through four are hitting the Blackmagic um, bi-directional converters coming in SDI and going out HDMI as the ATEM is four inputs HDMI and four SDI. So that tray in the bottom, my flashlight's blowing this out. The tray in the bottom that we built has those four converters. So there's the four HDMIs there, there's the four, or four of the SDI inputs are there. Um, so from just initial viewing, oh, <laughs> I was like, why did we lose the camera? Yeah, it's because you put that in the way, which resulted in that. There we go. <laughs> that was funny. Anyway, back to scheduled programming. Um, so I was curious what the latency was going to be with those four converters and then the rest just going in straight SDI. And from just camera movement, I don't see anything. Um, I'm going to actually test this and I'll show you how, but I'm very happy with this so far as, I mean, you know, it could be perfect and not be hitting converters, but I don't think we're going to have a problem, which I, I did kind of test before, but, you know, I didn't have it set up exactly in this rack, so, um... Anyway, I'm pretty happy with what I see so far. We're going to actually test this and get some real numbers here, which I will show you very soon. But let me take you over here and show you what Control World would be like. 
So let me re-rack this video. So this is the Mac Mini desktop, which we got patched in to the back here. I haven't labeled that one yet, but all those are labeled. Um, so we got Mac Mini uh, desktop display right there, and then MultiView right there. So the idea is you would have, you could really strip this down too, but you could, you know, do two separate monitors. Um, or we could even put like a smart view in the rack right here. And that would actually be cool because uh, it would still allow for our lacing bars to be behind it. But um, for now, this works. <clears throat> so yeah, this is what control world would be like. So the idea is very simple. Um, so, I mean, we've got ProPresenter, ProPresenter 7 driving graphics. Let me, this is, uh, whoops, let me take something else here. So just to give a test of the key. So there we go, we're keying our key and fill using a downstream key on the ATEM. Um, I can go over specific settings if needed, but uh, yeah, so our key is working. Um, so graphics driving into the ATEM via the deck link, giving us a key and fill output and input into the switcher. Uh, switcher is taking all sources and then, um, yeah, it, we've got Stream Deck set up for control. So all of these inputs have feedback. So this is changing, just pull out here a little bit. So as we ch hit our different sources here, uh, the this will give preview response here. So it's not just hitting random buttons, you know exactly what, and this is responsive to what the switcher is actually doing. It's not just when you hit the button. Um, so very handy, you know it's actually working. If those aren't changing, then you know that something is not working. Same with the key here. So, uh, and we've also, uh, also programmed it to change the text. So uh, I need to change that real quick now that I'm looking at it. So the key is out right now and that's saying key out. So I need to change that. But uh, when we hit the key here, it engages the downstream key, triggers the button to turn red based on the downstream key air uh, on air status and changed the button text. So this, this should say key out now is in your next button push would be to remove the key from on air. So as I hit that, our button now has gone back to normal color and this should say key in as in the next button press would take the key on air. But little tweaks here and there, that's why we're doing this. Uh, so here's the front of the rack, which as we're hitting the stream deck here, you can see preview bus is changing on the switch itself. So we've got the deck link in there on the shelf. This will be for like the um, keyboard and trackpad and stream deck will live in here for travel, we'll secure it. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. It just looks pretty sexy. This is in a, a black acrylic that allows LED light to pass through, I mean really, if you have a bright enough light, it's gonna pass through it, but um, it works really well with LEDs. It just gives a very nice diffusion to it. So that's got a blue LED behind it. Uh, Furman driving power conditioning to the rack and Mac Mini's in here. And then here's our inlet, our intake fan on the front. I don't think I've showed you guys the front yet. <laughs> so this is a uh, first view, I guess. All right, so here's how I'm going to do this. Count down timer with seconds, I think. Ding. 
30 minutes, this one. <clears throat> and thank you, Mr. Guy here. No thanks. Stop it. Alright, so, we're gonna take that. And we're gonna take our line running into our HDMI to SDI converter. Take that and put it into Mr. Laptop over here. Boom. So now that will display. Let's pull that. Cool. Tilt you guys up. All right, so now we're extending, and we're gonna go full screen on this, and set this to loop. So I'll just let that go. So now we got loop going on. <sighs> Why do we not have inputs five and six? Is the question though. Okay, now we got lots of clocks. I just took a patch out of uh, 7 and 8 and ran it out of the DA, just ran two new patches. Um, Alright, so now, now we have a full multi-view of, there's our program, full multi-view <laughs> of clocks. So let me grab a camera, I'll be right back. Alright, so I grabbed my Sony A7 Mark Dose. Uh, so I'm just gonna frame up on the multi-view here, and I do realize I could run this into screen capture and do all that, but I already have all this set up. I might as well just grab a camera. It's easier. Um, so let's go ahead. So I've got... Doo -doo -doo. I've got shutter set to 160th. Um, f-stop and iso i don't really care for this i'm just as long as i can see these numbers so i'm just gonna shoot this just to see if our shutter speed is fast enough um i'm gonna crank shutter speed up just a touch just to give us oops give us a little more definitive number there Wow, okay, that's pretty amazing. So I think you guys can see that. There is no latency on this. That's awesome. And Doggy thinks it's awesome too. Hi Phoebe. Hi Phoebes. Good girl, yeah. All right, well I am super happy with that. That is awesome. Um. Very cool, very cool, considering four inputs are running through converters, that's phenomenal. So, very excited about that, it makes me happy. So something I kind of already anticipated I was gonna need to do, but just fit this lid up and double checked. I had to put 90 um, adapters on here, or little connectors, barrels, whatever you wanna call them. Um, just for the lid to fit. Uh, it was tight. I mean, it would have worked, but the rib in the middle really kind of pushed on the cable. Right now, this is like a perfect, perfect fit with those 90s on this end and just going direct, straight directly into those patches there. So I'm liking this setup.